Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Flipgrid live event. I'm Siobhan from Team Flipgrid, and today we're celebrating something really special, World Read Aloud Day in partnership with Scholastic. And guess what? We're lucky to have New York Times bestselling author Tammy Charles with us today. Now, before we get started, let me just say, if you don't know what Flipgrid is, it's a free video discussion platform from Microsoft, and we're on a mission to empower everyone on the planet to share their voice and respect the diverse voices of others. That's why we're so excited about today's event. Tammy's book, All Because You Matter, is a powerful poetic love letter, an anthem, with a message we all need to hear from time to time, that we matter. So let's not wait a second longer to meet her. Without further ado, here's Tammy Charles. Thank you so much, Siobhan, for that wonderful introduction. I'm so excited to be here today with you and the whole Flipgrid team, and of course, all of the kids all across the world. Um, and with that said, I would love to give some shout outs because we have kids tuning in from their homes and from their schools like I said, all around the world. So Egypt, Canada, India, very cool. Thank you for being here today. And we have some other special classes. We have Mrs. Stein's second and third grade class joining from Ella, Ella Baker Elementary in Redmond, Washington. Welcome, Mrs. Spivey or Spivey's third grade class from Tacoma, Washington. Happy that you're here. Mrs. Laconis's fifth grade class from Roslyn Heights, New York, my neighbors. Let's see, we have third grade class from Lowell, Massachusetts, Miss Serpy's class. Thanks for coming. And Mrs. Rosales's bilingual fourth grade class from Texas. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Okay, so today I am going to talk to you about my book, All Because You Matter, which was illustrated with the legendary Brian Collier. Uh, we'll take a selfie together, and I'm also going to invite Siobhan back once I'm done to do a little bit of Q&A. I'll answer some of your questions, so be sure to submit your Q&A uh, on the side of the screen, and hopefully we'll be able to get through as many questions as possible. Okay, I'm ready. I hope you are. So let's get started. All because you matter. I want to start with a little bit of background information about myself. So a little bit about me. Those, those pictures always make me giggle when I see them. Those three pictures are varying stages of me growing up. I was born in a city called Newark in the state of New Jersey. And growing up, I remember being such a book lover. I don't think I really had a choice because my parents just, they were always giving me books, my mom and dad. My mom was a retired, well, she's retired now, but at the time she was the teacher at my elementary school, Madison. Shout out to Madison in Newark, New Jersey. She was the teacher, then the vice principal, then she became my principal at Madison Elementary. So I really didn't have a chance, a choice rather, but to love books. My parents were always giving me books. So it was only natural that as a book lover, for as much as I love to read, I loved writing as well. And that's why I'm here today. I'm literally following my dream. Below those pictures of little old Tammy are just a sample of some of the books that I have written over time. I love writing picture books that tell little known histories, very much like Fearless Mary and Freedom Soup, which tells about a tradition in my family that we celebrate every year. But the most heartwarming book of my career thus far has been this little book with that beautiful boy on the cover, who's my son, by the way, all because you matter. So that is a baby picture of my son. I think he looks just like me, by the way. <laughs> People in my family say otherwise, but 
This is my son, Christopher. I remember when he was born, uh, much like many of your parents, parents just want to keep their children small and tiny and innocent and protected from all the evils and bad parts of the world. And I remember having that same feeling when he was that tiny. I just wanted to hold him in this space forever. But we all know that time doesn't really work like that. You children, you, you get older, you grow up, you become wiser and more aware. You meet new friends at school. And that's exactly what happened for my son, Christopher. He entered kindergarten and he learned about this very important American hero. And that hero, hopefully you all recognize, is Dr. Martin Luther King. I remember when my son learned about Dr. King in kindergarten and he was so fascinated about all of the work that Dr. King did to ensure that people of all races, of all backgrounds could learn and grow and play in the same environments. He did very important work and my son was appreciative of that, but my son was very sad and confused as to why is it that if Dr. King worked so hard to make sure that we could all go to school together, we could all learn together, I remember his question. He said, well, mommy, why did the bad guys hurt him? And, and that question, when he asked me this, I remember being so taken aback for him to be that small and that young, but that wise to ask such an impactful question. So I knew that I needed to find a way to have these important conversations with my son. The conversation where I tell him that, yes, there's so much beauty in humanity, but there are bad things that have happened in our history. But before we talk about these very heavy topics, I knew that I wanted to write something for him to kind of give him some inspiration to remind him that despite all of that, you matter. And so I wrote the book of my heart. So this is my son. To the left, you can see him. He's about eight years old in that picture. And that is the two of us just last year when he turned 10, uh, when the book was published. All Because You Matter was written. It was inspired by my son's questions, his curiosity. But when I was done writing the story, I realized that although this is a message that my son needed, that he matters, that, that he comes from greatness and that he can achieve anything that he wants because there's a place for him in this world. I quickly realized that all children need to hear this message. Children of color, children from marginalized backgrounds, but especially all children. I found it to be a really important message to ensure that our children grow up learning the meaning of respect kindness and empathy. And so all of the words came to me in a dream one night. And next thing I knew, I woke up and I wrote the book of my heart, All Because You Matter. All Because You Matter is a love letter to children everywhere. It affirms their worth. It reminds them of the legacy of greatness that they come from. It reminds them of all of the work that our ancestors have done to ensure a quality of life today. And so before I read this love letter to all of you in the audience, I would like to share with you a reflection, an activity that maybe you can try this at home with your parents, or maybe you can try it in school with your teachers. This is a Venn diagram and teachers often use this in the classroom to help organize thoughts, to practice comparisons and contrasts. If you take a look at this particular Venn diagram, you'll notice that the left side says, I matter. As I read aloud to you, I would like for you to think of what are all the reasons and all the ways that you and the audience matter. 
And within that Venn diagram, you could literally make a list, you could write a paragraph, you could find pictures or draw pictures of all the reasons why you matter. Now, on the right side in the pink section, it says they matter. As I read aloud to you, I want you to think about not just yourself, but I want you to think about other people. And when I say they, I'm talking about your friends, uh, people in the community, maybe in your school. Why do other people matter? And here's the most important part. That section in the middle, the purple section where it says we matter. I want you to think about why is it that we all matter together? Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to read from All Because You Matter. And you're going to follow along. But first, I need my glasses. <laughs> they say that matter is all things that make up the universe, energy, stars, space. If that's the case, then you, dear child, matter. Long before you took your place in this world, you were dreamed of like a knapsack full of wishes carried on the backs of your ancestors as they created empires, pyramids, legacies. Building, inventing, working beneath red hot suns and cold blue moons, thinking of you years ahead because to them, you always mattered. On the night you were born, stars sprayed across the sky, each one full of light, hope, love, and all the moments in your life that would matter. Like your first steps, bare feet planted on cold floor, hobbling, wobbling, toppling, only to stand and try again. Or your first words, spoken almost like a lullaby, notes climbing a ladder to the sky. Mama, papa, mahal kita. Mahal kita means I love you in Tagalog. Or the first time you opened a book, like a mirror staring back at you and really saw yourself. Same hair, same skin, same dreams. The words and pictures coming together like sweet jam on toast, musica blasting through barrios, sun in blue sky, all because you matter. But in galaxies far away, it may seem that light does not always reach lonely planets, covered moons, stars unseen as if matter no longer exists. And just like moons hidden in the dark, there will be times when you too will question your place in the universe. Like the time you'll hear the teacher call your name, Hosan, Uzomaka, Yordenis. And the whispers and giggles begin, followed by, what kind of name is that? Or the time you'll see a letter, Big, bold, red on the page, and you will question if you and your work and your effort matter. Or the time when your papa turns on the news and you see people everywhere take a breath, take a stand, take a knee. And you hear papa's whispered prayers as another name is called, Trayvon, Tamir, Philando, and you wonder if they or you will ever matter. But did you know that you do? Did you know that you were born from queens, chiefs, legends? Did you know that you are the earth, that strength, power, and beauty lie within you? Did you know that you are sun rays, calm like ocean waves, 
stuff like montañas, magic, like stars in space. And on the day the universe was created, you were thought of, dreamed of, carried like a knapsack full of wishes as planets, stars, moons took their places, making room for you, your people, their dreams, your future. All because since the beginning of time, you mattered, they mattered, we matter, and always will. So I hope you enjoyed this read aloud of All Because You Matter. And I would love to hear from the students and teachers in the audience. Here's where you can find me. I'm on Twitter at Tammy Writes Stuff, Instagram at Tammy Writes, and my website is TammyWrites.com. Okay, Siobhan, are you still there? Are you with us? I sure am, and we are seeing some amazing questions that are coming through in the chat, so please keep them coming. Now, before we get to those, we want to do a little bit of something fun. We are going to take our selfies together. Mm -hmm. I'll give you about a minute to get set up, and while you do, make sure that once you take these selfies that you're sharing them with us on social. You can tag us at Scholastic, and you can tag us at Flipgrid, and please don't forget to tag our special guests of the day as well in those photos at Tammy Wright's stuff. So we've got another 10 or so seconds before we're ready to get those selfies done. Keep prepping, get the cameras out, make sure we're all good. And we'll do a quick countdown. All right, is everybody ready? I'm ready. We'll do a quick countdown to three, you ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one, and we've got a good 30 seconds to get those selfies in. Let's see all of those smiles. Let's see that energy. Let's get our pictures done. And don't forget, we're going to be tagging them. So let's give it another couple seconds to get that set. Big smiles all around. And that is perfect. Thank you all so much. That was awesome. And please don't forget to tag us when you post them using at Scholastic, at Tammy Writes Stuff, and at Flipgrid. And with that, we're going to get to some of your questions. Now, the first question we have is from Miss Jackson's third grade class. And they are wondering, which of the books you've written is your favorite? <laughs> so I'm a former teacher. That's like asking who was my favorite student. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I have to say all because you matter. I mean, come on. That's my son on the cover of the book. It's my favorite book. This is the book that when I, when I wrote it, I said, you know, if I write nothing else, I can retire happily <laughs> because I wrote something uh, a legacy of sorts that my son can pass on to his children. And I do hope that this is the type of book that many families will want to have in their homes for many years to come. So, yep, All Because You Matter is my favorite. Okay, so a little bit of a favorite student, just like a little bit, just a little bit. Little bit. <laughs> Our next question is coming from Fair Oaks Elementary School, and they want to know how do you feel about the book? How, how does your son, I'm sorry, how does your son feel about the book? How does he support your writing career? So my son, when this book published, you could not tell him that he wasn't famous. I mean, the promotion leading up to the book, he got to do events with the NFL. He met Jason Reynolds and so much more. So he has really enjoyed being a part of something that really promotes kindness and respect like he he also understands the message but he does like a little bit of the fame that's attached to it totally understandable and we're still getting a lot of questions about your book and this is great because today's flipgrid topic of the day is inspired by your book 
And the topic is called what makes you special? And we'll show you that in just a moment. But before we do, Tammy Charles, we've got a question for you. We'd love for you to respond to the topic. What makes you special? That's a really good question. My face is hurting from smiling so much because I think what makes me special is the fact that I am literally following my dream. I could get teary eyed just thinking about it. Uh, being an author is something that I wanted as a child, but I didn't think I could be an author. Growing up, I didn't read a lot of books that featured kids like me, kids from the neighborhood that I grew up in. Um, it just wasn't as prevalent in the 1980s. So fast forward to 2022, I am now a part of a movement of, of authors who are committed to telling these wonderful, diverse stories. And for me, that's a dream come true. So that's what makes me special is the fact that I stepped out on faith and I'm literally following my dreams. I'm here with the kids that I write for. There's nothing better than that. So that was such an amazing and inspiring answer. I'm feeling more inspired now. Now for educators and parents, you've heard Tammy's answer. Now we're gonna show you how to find the Flipgrid topic of the day so your learners can reflect on all they've learned during today's live events. It's as easy as launching your browser and typing aka.ms slash you matter. This will take you directly to today's topic of the day, what makes you special. And you'll see this special video from Tammy and a discussion prompt that your students can use to reflect on and respond to. You'll also notice a small blue button that says add topic. You can choose to add to this topic, to a group, create a new group or save it for later. And for our classrooms, we're gonna think of a group like our classroom. Now there is a student view, and here's what your students will see as they begin to reflect on that topic and submit their own video responses to share their learning. They can have fun using all the new creative effects and expressions inside the Flipgrid camera. And if you haven't seen them yet, be sure to check them out. And for all of you out there, please remember you can use this in your classroom immediately following today's event as a follow-up activity. We'll post that link in the chat for you to copy and paste. And now it's time to get to some more of your questions. Here's a good one. In addition to your son being an inspiration for the book, what, if any, other social issues and events inspired you to write this book? And this is coming from Andre H. in Newark, New Jersey. Newark, happy! <laughs> That's wonderful. I love that. Um, so I think what really drove the message home um, as far as social issues. Yes, my son was inspired. Uh, he did inspire this book and it kind of kicked off with this conversation about Dr. King and all the work that he's done to ensure equality among the races. I think really every social justice issue that has been tied to the work of Dr. King has inspired me in the making of this book. Uh, All Because You Matter was already done and, and printed and ready to go by the time the pandemic hit. But I'll tell you that all of the issues that took place during the pandemic of 2020, it I felt that I poured some of those issues into the book, although it was already written. You'll notice in the book that I do uh, pay a little bit of tribute to some of our young men of color who have experienced injustice and they are no longer here with us. People like Trayvon, Tamir, Belando. Um, these are the conversations that I've had with my son and I'm sure as teachers and especially parents, our, our children are going to get older. They're going to start seeing things in the news, in the headlines, and we may not always be able to shield them from what they see. But what we can do 
is that we can open up conversation. We can create a safe space for our kids so that they feel comfortable with coming to us when they do see something in the media that can be a little scary and disturbing when you're a child. Better for them to come to you than to hold it in. So, you know, social justice issues, really all of them, <laughs> all of them that are tied to how uh, systemic racism has impacted our country. I poured that into the book. Thank you for sharing that answer. And just wanted to let you know, we have a kindergarten class from Howe Road, from Miss Oquindo's kindergarten class that just wanted to let you know that they loved your book. And when you're talking about kind of encompassing all of them, one of the things that they loved about it was all the languages. So thank you so much from them. The oh, next question. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. I love it when people point that out because, you know, America is such a melting pot. And I, I try to be intentional about spotlighting that. So I do get a lot of questions about Mahakita, what does it mean? Why did you include it? In my read aloud, I, I made sure that I, uh, you know, translated that. It's a Filipino language. It, that phrase means I love you. I just want to, if I could have, I would have included more languages, but I just want to show just how beautifully diverse the whole world is. So that's why I put it in there. Thank you for noticing. And now from Ms. Caudle's class, how long did it take you to publish All Because You Matter? Okay, so this, this was a very special story because publishing is a very, very slow industry, especially when you write uh, picture books. It takes years. But this particular book, all of the words came to me in a dream. I literally heard them, woke up, wrote it down, I saw the art. It never happens like that, by the way. I just got really lucky with this one. I, I turned it in to my agent on a Friday. She read it immediately and she said, okay, I'm turning this into publishers on Monday. And I think by Tuesday, we had several offers for a deal. And about a year and a half later, it was on the shelves. And it really, it just never really works like that. Publishing tends to move very slow, but I've been so lucky that Scholastic was able to marshal such a strong support for this book and so quickly too. And those things matter. And we just have to give you a little bit more praise. And this is coming from Delaney Academy. And they wanted to let you know that they love that you're a teacher, that you're a woman and a woman of color that is sending such a beautiful message. And they just wanna say thank you and please teach your son to write a book so that we can have a child's perspective on racial issues and his experience. Well done. I'll do that. <laughs> That's a good idea. So a couple of more questions. One of them is, how do you prepare yourself to write a new story? Ooh, okay. So this is where I have to like geek out a little bit because once a teacher, always a teacher. The first thing I'm going to say is this, no story that I write starts without reading. I need to read, 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 read so many books before I can dive into my own book. Uh, there are certain books that no matter what I am writing, I will always pick up these books and read them aloud because I like the language, I like the musicality, something about these particular books just get me fired up and ready to write. And those two books are Dave the Potter, which Brian Collier illustrated, I love his work, and Drum Dream Girl by Margarita Engel and Rafael Lopez. Um, I cannot write a single book without reading those two books first. Once I read those books and I'm, I'm in the mood, uh, sometimes I listen to music. I like all kinds of music. I like gospel, jazz, R&B, something about that gets me inspired, but this is the most important. I keep a journal and students out there, I bet your teachers encourage you to keep a journal. And my journal is a safe space for me. I mean, look at it, it's sloppy. There's highlights, I've got little stickies. In my journal, spelling doesn't matter. Grammar doesn't matter. I just get all the thoughts out, 
lock them up in here. And this is where the magic begins. That's how all my stories start. All right. Thank you. You have given us some great ideas, some great starters, and some more books to add to our reading list. <laughs> we cannot thank you enough for sharing your expertise with us today. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share with everyone who's watching? I do. So when I was growing up, my parents, before we would leave for school, they would always shout out like an inspirational quote. And even though I'm an adult, I don't live with my parents anymore. Um, they still do this. They'll text little inspirational quotes in the morning, just a little bit of soul food to start off my day. So there's this one quote that has stayed with me ever since I was a child. And that quote is, the race isn't given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one who endures to the end. I, I probably messed that up, but that's the gist of what the quote is. And, and here's why I think that that quote is so appropriate for this event, because we are all here in the spirit of reading aloud. And, and one thing that I want students to know, because we have students visiting us from all over the world, is this. Reading is not a race. You know, uh, read for pleasure, read for joy, read for understanding, read to build connection with humanity. That's that's the stuff. That's the real stuff the real purpose of reading and reading aloud, but most of all, read for you. So that's my message. And that was a great message. It's really given us something to go and run with after today. And we know that as long as we endure, we will finish. So thank you. Today has been so special. And we just thank all of you for spending this World Read Aloud Day time with us. For Tammy, we thank you for spending this time with us as well. And guess what? We have Flipgrid events every week. And we'd love for you to join us as we learn together. You can always go to the aka.ms slash Flipgrid live events for more information and to register for our upcoming events. And don't forget to check out the topic of the day. It is live now. So have a great day and thank you so much for joining us. Everybody have a great World Read Aloud Day. Bye.